contemplating using some of that uh, pure capsaicin for some jerky. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Dude, before the road trip, make a special bag for Lawrence and Brad. <laughs> <laughs> do that just start pat like have them all like individually bag that way you can just pass them out and be like ah, i got jerky for everybody and then I'll just have, have those two have faith write their names on them so it's girly and be like oh faith made you your little snacky bags for the oh room. yeah and have like a bunch of stuff in it that way the jerky is kind of inconspicuous like a little bag of like pretzels and shit like that that way like they think... <laughs> i can make that I he'll make never that see it happen. coming <laughs> or just have one piece in there oh just wait for that way it. you never know i mean he could be eating a couple pieces or he could get it right off the bat <laughs> if you're going to do one piece it's got to be like over the top like borderline send to the hospital high. i mean it's pure capsaicin <laughs> i mean you have to dissolve it with alcohol like grain spirits oh man all right let's give this a shot see what happens <clears throat> should be great do i want let me, let me download this shit it's a good download. idea when the boss isn't here, you can't tell me no. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> some hexafluoride. Too. Yeah. <laughs> my science word of the day right now hexafluoride hexafluoride question is do you even know what hexa means six oh, fuck you one thing I oh, okay huh yeah what get it Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roebuck, and joining me today are my half-brothers, thrice removed, Justin, Captain Redbeard Bird, and Uncle, when you masturbate an angel dies, Ken. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your home for Harley parts, accessories, and all the gear you could possibly need for your bike. <clears throat> there it is. Yeah. <laughs> On today's episode, we will be discussing Operation Clean Slate, Between Two Wheels TV, and recapping our trip to the 2019 International Motorcycle Show in Dallas. What's up, guys? What up? <sighs> What's wrong, Justin? You, you look down. Bro, when you go to like the IMS and you see all these people making a living, building bikes, <sighs> and working for the industry, and then you have to go back to work, it just sucks. Yeah. I mean, cutting been... decals today was pretty fucking depressing. Dude, fuck off. Made some pretty cool ones for my car, though. Yeah. So. That's it. I'm just. Just I'm, bummed that the type of work you do is not as cool as. Well, it, like you said, when you said, like, that's why they pay you the big bucks. Like, I wish I was making the big bucks. Mm. Like, for you, I mean, you, you get to go to work and have a hot, fresh, pressed towel handed to you. And, you know, Asian chicks massage your feet while you work. But. Feet. That must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't quite get down that. Service. But. Uh, it's close enough. But yeah, I mean, I, there's some perks. Yeah. <laughs> do, you use the, do you use the turndown service? That's what you service? call them, <laughs> perks. Perks. They're just perks. Uh, but no, when I do travel, I do get hotel services. That of is course you do. nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, especially when I travel with uh, partners and higher level folks in the firm. They, Did you say, uh, hold on. No, no. <laughs> hold no. on. No, no, no. No, no, no. I want to bring up something that was said on the trip, but no one brought it up. When he said that his the guy that he was with ordered like an eighteen hundred dollar steak. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like neither of us. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, that sounds about right. Time, yeah. <laughs> the entire meal was eighteen hundred. His steak. Was oh like, okay. Oh, that makes it. dollars. That, that doesn't make me feel any better. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah but that's that's life, you know it's when you when you work your ass off when you're young you get mm. to the old people age like Ken and I and you get perks whoa 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 where the fuck are my perks at <laughs> you get to work from home every day that's a to, perk for for not a lot i mean i can you know cut whatever decals wow. i fucking want okay. dicks all over the place i mean dicks on dicks on dicks on dicks yeah so what you're saying is 
I guess that's my perk because I can, you know, make my own damn decal. <laughs> what were you going to say? <laughs> I was going to say, so what you're saying is your boss doesn't pay you for shit. The boss is a dick. The boss is a total dick. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about Operation Clean Slate. Yes. Now, as our listeners may recall, or if they haven't, they need to go back and listen to uh, episode two. We discussed plans for Operation Clean Slate. Holy balls. Is it that long ago? Yeah. Damn. Uh, episode two. This is, what, episode 17? Episode 17. Man. Uh, anyways, we we plan to obtain a motorcycle, customize it, and give it to a deserving veteran. Now, with that being said, we have started a Patreon page to help raise money for the build. We're also working with some corporate sponsors as well because, well, as we all know, bikes are not cheap. So, Especially Harleys. Yeah. Yeah. $30,000. So, um, after we get the money and the bike and get everything going uh we spoke with adam sandoval who said that he was going to assist us in finding that deserving veteran who we can give this bike to yeah and we do plan on contacting some other youtubers or some other folks in the industry to see if they would be able to help us out as well Mm -hmm. so with that being said the patreon we have three tiers we have the training wheels. <laughs> uh, this is a dollar a month, just as a way just to help out, say thanks uh, for what we do and for the veterans. Uh, that's where that money will go. Then you have the big wheels, which is $4 a month. And that gets you into kind of the perk range. Uh, you'll be able to be part of the live streams. So as we record our episodes here, we will have a live stream going on YouTube that will only be available to Patreon members. Yeah. It's actually a pretty legit live stream, too. It's not like my videos where it's just, like, super unformatted. Yeah, me camera. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually a legit live stream. Uh, and then from there, there's some live Q&As, things like that, that we'll also host. And then you have the Power Wheels. This is the $10 patrons and... They get all the same stuff, the access to live streams, things like that. But after six months, we'll hook them up with a T-shirt and sticker pack uh, just for saying thanks for, you know, helping us out with the build. And you'll also have access to the build series that we plan on putting on, and we will be live streaming that as well. And if we are on the road and you are going to be near, uh, you'll be invited to special meetups. So... That's kind of what goes into the perks of the tiers. Uh, anything I'm missing or anything y'all would like to add? No, um, I think, I don't think we ever talked about this, but just kind of like a, you, you said live Q&A, but we can just have like an after show hangout session yeah. with the listeners. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. It'd be easy for us too, because it'd basically be like stop streaming. And then at that point we could pay attention to the chat and answer any questions that were put in there and yeah, any questions that might've come up during to... the episode kind of difficult to yeah, field yeah. questions while we're trying to do a show. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, and I could be able to do that. So for anyone who can and is able to assist, please head over to betweentwowheels.com, click on the Patreon link, uh, or just go to patreon.com uh, slash between two wheels is the number two. Uh, but anything y'all can do to help us out, it'd be great. We already expect we're going to be putting in our own money. This is just trying to offset as much as we can. Could they make a one-time donation? I'm still trying to figure out how to do that on Patreon. You can't do it through Patreon. Okay. Oh, no. Oh. So then okay. what we Unless will... they just pledge for a month, pay it, and uh, then disconnect. Okay. Okay. So. Sorry, I got a cough, guys. <coughs> uh, ruined. Yeah, sorry. Start over. I figured I might as well just get it over with Cutie now. Because if not, yeah. it was just going to bug the hell out of me. <laughs> Is it a spicy jerky cough? No, it's freaking mountain cedar cough. Mm, mountain I like to cedar. think that it's spicy jerky cough. So, moving on from Operation Clean Slate, which, by the way, I am hugely looking forward to uh, hopefully getting started this year. Oh, yeah. Um, One of the other perks for our Power Wheels members that I did not mention that just came to my mind, when we come up against parts decisions Mm -hmm. that we, the three of us, cannot agree on. Which is going to happen often. Let's just face it. Oh, yeah. We're going to put it out to the Patreon Power Wheels members to help make the decision 
So we'll put together, you know, if we don't know what color or what type of handlebars we're going to go with, you know, we'll put the two or three options out there and have you guys help us decide. So that will also be part of this. Now, moving on from Operation Clean Slate, let's move over to Between Two Wheels TV. Now, this is going to be our YouTube channel. Uh, Justin's been, is going to be kind enough to kind of set it up for us, but he's slammed with the, with the bike and bird video. So it'll be, uh, Ken and I doing all the editing. And so it will, (laughs) it will not be anywhere near as awesome as what Justin does, but it'll be there. Um, so what we're looking to do with the between two wheels TV is whenever we are doing a podcast, we're talking about products or how to do something. We can talk about it, but that doesn't give you the visual that a lot of folks need to fully grasp what we're saying. So firmly grasp it. So <laughs> that's what she said. So what we'd like to do is maybe do supplemental videos to go with those podcasts. So you have something to actually go and see and understand what the hell we're saying um, Two, if we're talking about specific products that we really like, or if we're doing something like a gear guide style uh, episode, we'll be able to show you what those products look like and kind of show you what they look like on three different size guys. Now, Justin, Ken, and I are all tall, but we are very different in actual build. So having a good understanding of how uh, different clothes fit or jackets or things like that can come in handy. Uh, also, like we said, we will be doing live streams of the build series for the Operation Clean Slate That will be on YouTube. And we're going to be recording some of our podcast episodes. This episode right here is being recorded via video so we can see how it's going to look. And if it looks somewhat decent, what's your theory? 5x5 or 10x10, 40x40, what is it? What? 30-30. 30-30, there we go. I knew something. (laughs) I was so lost Yeah, Yeah, so was I. (laughs) It's like you don't even care. Um. If it's decent, we'll put it out there just so you guys can kind of see the the goofy shit we do behind the scenes and all the stuff that gets edited out. We're all naked right now, so that's a plus. (laughs) From the waist down. (laughs) Allegedly. Which you cannot see. Uh, Big blurs. But what we're we're looking at is it will be unedited video. Um, Whatever happens, that's what we will be doing. Whereas on the podcast themselves, we do edit the uh, the audio to cut out a lot of the goofy shit so that it doesn't take up a bunch of time. So uh, we plan on having this up uh, probably in the month of January uh, for 2019. And so we'll put a link out on our website, www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. And uh, yeah, be sure to... Uh, check out the YouTube channel once it comes up. Can we also get Brad to do gear review as well? That way we know what it looks like uh, on the girl. Yes, yeah, yeah definitely. He'll cover okay. the a flat-chested woman. Flat-chested woman, yeah. Those yeah. hipster dudes and mm-hmm. flat-chested women. Yeah. Just Anybody who rides cafe racers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're recording video now. Yeah. So they they'll see me. Oh boy. Yes. Fondling oh, his boot. Oh god. Yes. That was right on. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I know exactly wow. where the nipple is every time. <laughs> wow. I'm a little turned on. All right, so as you heard in the intro, we are now being sponsored by Get Lowered. Hashtag Woo-hoo. sellouts. Yes, yes, we have sold out. However, we're not making anything off this. <laughs> only only the listeners get something from this. So yeah, right? uh, you've heard about us talking about. Oh, wow, what hour. a rookie. Oh. <laughs> it's time for me to call my kids, guys. I, I got to take this. All right, please hold. All right, we're back. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I got here the most, my phone on silent. Most professional podcast on the internet right now. Yeah. yeah. So just top it all off. Yeah, vape oh, it if you got vape it. nation right there. Yeah. No, right. it's like an Xbox Live chat right now. Yes. So you've heard about <laughs> us talking about get lowered cycles on a lot of our episodes. Um, and now we've partnered with Get Lowered to give all the between two wheels listeners something a little extra. So when you spend $100 or more, Get Lowered will hook you up with a free Get Lowered shirt. All you have to do, head over to GetLowered.com, choose the parts and gear you need, and when you get ready to check out, use the coupon code B2WPODCAST. This is B, the number 2 W podcast. And then put your shirt size in the notes section, and they will hook it up for you for free. So uh, be sure to head over there, show them some love, 
as they are trying to hook up our listeners. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, I do. I, I've, I've really enjoyed working with those guys. I mean, it's trying to work out some type of sponsorship deal for our listeners is never easy. Uh, but uh, it, it was great working with them. So it's, their customer service is just like dealing with them in, in yeah. business as well. I would so. say that's probably their strongest suit is their customer service. I mean, I've been sponsored by them for over a year now. And it's just the, the when you're dealing with companies, the communication can get really messed up. Yes. With them, it's never been an issue. I always get an email reply within 24 hours. Anytime I order something, it gets shipped within 24 hours. Like they are just on top of it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've spent a lot of money there. Yeah. And one of the great things is, is their chat feature. Oh, yeah. 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 The live chat. I just, mm-hmm. That way I don't have to look. I can just go on there and ask them, do you have this part for this bike? And there it is. Yeah, because they don't have all their parts listed on their website. So you can go yeah. to like Big Book or whatever it is, and whatever you find in drag specials, they'll be able to get for yeah. you. So that's kind of cool, too. All right, so let's move on to the International Motorcycle Show for 2019 in Dallas, Texas. Yeah. Oh, so awesome. So let's talk about some of the favorite stuff we saw. And let's start with you, Ken. We usually start with Justin and I. Let's, let's start with you. All right, well, right off the bat, just seeing all the new stuff, touching and fondling it. Fondling, yes, yes. yes. Getting my dirty little mitts on them. You were rubbing your junk on a lot of it, too. <sighs> of course. <laughs> of course. No, you didn't get nearly as much free stuff this this time, though. How disappointed in you. Did, well, we were really, you know, leaving that for, you know, Tracy and Miss yeah. Bird. They did terrible. And, did they? I don't, even I don't know. I haven't gotten to see my so, bag yet. So. <laughs> okay, so we, I went through ours. A lot of the stuff we got were, like, stickers. Yeah. And like stickers. stuff like that. It, we'll get into that later. Let's, let's, let's save that for <laughs> another section of this. I'm just derailing this whole shit. Yeah. <laughs> Since right. I already interrupted, you want to get in your mic, Ken? Stop being such an amateur. Well, I don't want to be too damn loud. No, no, no get up on it, dude. People complain about peeking. Get up on it. Peek, peek. No, I've already you fixed know? that. Oh. So Maybe. anyways. We'll see in post. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, it being the motorcycle show, International Motorcycle Show, there's all the freaking motorcycles. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, they're everywhere. And there's the motorcycle show and all that. But I did have some key picks that just I really wanted to see in person. Mm-hmm. Uh, Confederate motorcycles. Man. They... Oh. I have not been blown away by motorcycles by, in like that in a long time. By like a custom motorcycle. Like yeah. most of the custom motorcycles have big wheels, fancy paint, you know, they're slammed to the ground. And everyone does that. Low and slow. Yeah, yeah. really, yeah. Or vintage. Or true. Yeah. Slow or and extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but their bikes are yeah. so amazing to see in person. A work yeah. of art. Yeah, definitely is a work of art. Couldn't believe it. Now, with most works of art, comes with a pretty hefty price tag yes (laughs) they do now i had an opportunity to meet with their ceo afterwards super cool dude uh this dude i would not have expected him to be from florida but he's he's from florida he builds all his bikes in alabama birmingham alabama um but when you're talking to him you're thinking okay east texan maybe west texan yeah uh, with his draw his accent his cowboy hat on uh the whole get up but uh one of the most down-to-earth dudes i've ever met and he and i spoke for like an hour he came all the way out to one of our after parties yeah just to hang out and shoot the breeze so that was super cool of him Uh, but i'll go into more about that when when it's my turn (laughs) (laughs) go first ken then we'll interrupt you every 30 seconds that's cool and keep talking i'm used to that (laughs) but yeah confederate motorcycles the, the warhawk was the one yes. of their models that I picked. Was sexy. that the one in Transformers? Or was that a different one? No. It, that was not the one in Transformers. Okay, because the one believe. in Transformers was 85000 Yeah. So the Warhawk, <laughs> they all, they're almost similar, all, all the models, but they're all very unique. unique. Yeah. 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 Uh, but the Warhawk, it's 150 horsepower, 160 torque, <laughs> and it only weighs like 400 500 pounds yeah it's a 132 cubic engine engine and it's got three cams in it i don't know how that works i'm not an engine guy but that is insane 150 horsepower and 160 torque on a 500 pound motorcycle yeah Nuts. yeah it's just stupid fast yeah yeah that was the one in transformers oh it was okay yep. but yeah so yeah. yeah that's the one in transformers have you seen it in all black oh 
I have not. Jeez. Oh, hey, you show the camera. My Lanta. That know makes how well it look pick it up. Oh, like, yeah, it's less it's good of a like a standout Concept bike. Yeah, like yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. But um, oh my god. It's so excellent. <laughs> and that's the one that he rides like daily. Yeah. He got what 18 or 25,000 miles in 18 months. Yeah. yeah that's so... stupid. He was yeah. saying that he has more miles on Confederate motorcycles than every Confederate motorcycle ever built combined. <laughs> I believe it. Well, they only build 30 a year. Yeah. Ish, yeah, 30 yeah. ish a year. And they have four models, three models? Four to five. Yeah. Uh, they have some that are exclusive to the Asia market. Uh, I know they have a Russia uh, factory. Yeah. Well, I don't, well, want, I don't want to call it a factory. Yeah. Distribution. But uh, but yeah, they they only build thirty, and they their maintenance records are pristine. Oh, I bet. So they know how many miles are on all. But again, to your point, it's an expensive motorcycle. Well, they start at sixty thousand and go from there. Yeah, and they go way up. Yes. So a lot of people are going to buy these and showcase them. Yeah, I couldn't do that. No, no. Well, if I mean, you I fuck you money, I maybe? wouldn't. Th- I wouldn't thrash it, but I mean, I would rode it like I, I stole it. I mean, I'd still ride the hell out of it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, just no way I couldn't. <laughs> so one of the other bikes that I really liked that I think we can all agree on as well is the BMW R twelve hundred and fifty GS. Yes. Yeah, give me it now. Pretty much all of them, all of the twelve hundred and fifty GS is there. They had a couple different models. They had the the with the executive or the exclusive the adventure yeah they it goes just different all, setups yeah uh that thing for the seat that it had on it coming stock and it was stock for what 26,000 23,000 yeah for the super premium one it was it was up there in the 259 i think yeah uh, it was so comfortable oh yeah i yeah. mean i'm 64 you know 300 pounds, 307 pounds, actually. I weighed myself today. Down, there you go. Down a few more pounds. Very good. But uh, And it was really comfortable, like, amazingly. And he was telling me you can adjust the seat height on the bike. Yeah. No, no tools needed. Adjust the rear suspension electronically. I mean, you can't beat that. No. No, I wanted it right then and there. It had a, it had a lot of cool features, too, that I, don't, I didn't see on any of the other adventure or ADV bikes we looked at. Um, and it's it's BMW, so it should have it. Mm-hmm. But it had the auxiliary plugs for heated seats. Oh, uh, you the heated or, gear for heated gear. Heated gear, yeah. And just a lot of really nice creature comforts. I did think that the the, the port for the heated gear was in an odd spot, though. Yeah, up on it the was dash. up on the dash versus down by the seat where you would plug in your jacket or pants or whatever. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure why they do that unless that would be a bad spot if you're taking you know, your seat off to get to stuff when you're out in the bush or something. Either that or I don't know how long the cords are on the gear, but I feel like if it was close to the seat, maybe waterproofing, you would like, as you're getting off, you might be bumping it and have the risk of true. breaking it off in there. Yeah. Less, less chance of it getting it's wet out of the way up, up on up the there. dash. That's true. On how... And you're constantly standing up and sitting back down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I can you don't want to get now. snagged on it. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Okay. So yeah, super excellent. And then, of course, the Indian FTR, gorgeous bike, all yeah. of them, and they had so many different setups there. There was the one that had that fake ass carbon fiber tank, though. <laughs> the fake ass carbon fiber, everything. <laughs> I was so disappointed with that. Like, how are you going to put that on there and it not and all that money, and it not be yeah. real? I did find out today, though, um, that the FTR twelve hundred track edition or track replica, that one with the orange or the the red frame. They did make some changes to it before they released it. They added the Akrapovich exhaust Mm -hmm. standard. And then the entire line, not just the race ready, got a $500 increase in price. Increase in price. Increase in price. Hmm. They kind of snuck that into the radar, but all Hmm. models based to the track ready edition went up $500. Now, to be fair. To be fair. Still priced well. Um, the, The FTR... So much sexier than the Harley FXDR. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Hands down. Oh, Jesus. So much more Without comfortable, too. Yeah. Granted, I haven't gotten to ride the FTR yet, but just sitting on it, I feel like the FTR would be a whole lot more fun. Yeah, especially with the intake box. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. It doesn't have that retarded looking. Gigantic. Piece of plastic just hanging out there. Drag saying, racing induced. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. No. Okay. Yeah. And now you you actually squashed this next bike. I did. And like picked it up and was about to walk out with I it. I totally but, could uh, just pick it up and walk <laughs> away with it. That'd be the Honda Monkey. <laughs> oh, man. The seat on that thing was stupid comfy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, one thing I found funny. They look so cool, man. <laughs> um, Miss Bird couldn't flat foot it. Nope. No. The only one she could flat foot was that little bitty kid's the, dirt bike. The, the 50cc pit bike. That yeah. was the only thing. She could not flat foot the Grom. <laughs> and she could not flat foot the monkey. It's funny. I put her on the monkey on my Facebook. Someone's like, you need to get her a Grom. I'm like, this it's, is a Grom. This is the same, same exact size. They thought it was like one of just an old retro bike. I was like, no, this is a Grom sized bike. Yeah. <laughs> For, exact same engine. To get into your head. Everything. It's the exact same bike, just retro looking. And they're like, oh my gosh. But I'd buy it over a Grom any day. Oh, for sure. It's got so much more character. Yeah, those those are some of the, the key things that I just really loved. Yeah, it literally looks like someone took a 1970s pit bike and put it in a time machine. <laughs> it looks like, so great. It looks so good. It, I, I liked it. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I would actually own one yeah. as a joke or <laughs> as something just to pile a bunch of them in the back of the truck and go somewhere. Like if you're going out to Coda or something. Yo, I would spend $5,000 on that bike before I spent $5,000 on a full-size electric bike. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yep. Oh, yeah. damn electric bikes. More use. You can get way more use out of it. All right. So is that it, Ken? Yeah, those are those are like, those were what really stuck out in my head. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. All right, Justin, what about you? Well, it's not going to be anything super crazy because two of them are the same as Ken. So the BMW 1250 GS, I thought that bike was awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, especially when I realized that the model that I was sitting on came at like 18.5. That's less than what I paid for my touring bike. So... Yes, sign me up, please. <laughs> um, but keeping kind of on that same track, the Honda Africa Twin doesn't have the same features as BMW, but I feel like dollar for dollar, you get more with the, the yeah. Africa Twin. What was the price on the Africa Twin? Like 13 13, five. 13. And With a $400 delivery. But. And if you get the anniversary edition, it was 15 Yeah. But I found that that does have quite a bit more features than the base model. Well, that's okay. At least that's good. So you're not yeah. just paying, you're not paying paint. for the paint job now. <laughs> but uh, like they, they offer it in like I think five or six different engine configurations. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, that's so, good. So you can really price to what you need. But uh, that 13.5 model would check pretty much every box that I could think of. And oh, yeah. uh, it made me want an ADV bike like now. <laughs> right now. I went and checked. I was like, how much do I owe on the Dyna? Oh, okay. oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, other than the ADV bikes, same as Ken said, that Indian FTR 1200 uh, in person is a completely different bike. It's it comfortable. Looks it It's aggressive. Like a salesman camp and he said, do you have any questions? I said, yeah, how can I get this out of here without you guys noticing? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I wanted to take it home right there. I have to say the only thing I really kind of wished was just different or just right off the bat for the Indian would be the, the red frame. I wish it was a more aggressive yes. red. Yeah, we talked red. about that, yeah. Mm. I wouldn't get the red frame, though. After seeing it in person, I liked the blacked out look better. Yeah. I would get the black frame, and I would paint it white. Not the frame. I would paint the bike white with the black frame. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that'd I think cool. that would look awesome. Well, you know me with white bikes. I, I love the look of a white bike. Yeah, racist. Racist. Hey, it's not racist. If if what? Come on. <laughs> no, no, I can't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right, so... I had a little bit of a different list. The Can-Am Riker Rally Edition. Uh, the, these things are like eleven grand. I That's what I just now saw. I cannot Whoa, believe really? that. really? Yeah. Those, and, those and, were only eleven grand. So I actually went on, on uh, Can-Am's site and built my own. Yeah. And that's what it came out to be. Eleven? So, yeah, no way. Eleven K. After all your white privilege upgrades? Well, I, I went with <laughs> the off-road package. What? what? Yeah, an that's a package? thing. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! I I, I want to see that. <laughs> so uh, it's just that was a cool thing. Plus, everything was adjustable on the fly. That was that insane. was very impressive. The handlebars, the handlebars shocked the hell out of me. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, and when I was talking with the sales rep, he was saying that you can put it into sport mode, and it turns off the governing stuff on the computer. 
Oh, so you can just spin everything? So you can go and just have a ball with it. So, bro, that's dope. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me get it pulled up for, for the camera here. But, uh, yeah, it's it's just a sick looking. And it, that's, that is that's so, so ex- cool. That is so excellent. An awesome spider. Oh, man. But they're not calling it a spider. They're calling it the Riker. The Riker, so, yeah. Uh, they have shifted their lineup a little bit for uh, 2019. But uh, I and like that's the one I, I brought up when I was talking about Misper getting one. Yeah. I feel like it's sporty enough to actually be cool. <laughs> and it can keep up with us on the highway. Yeah. Where like an 883 hertz. Yeah. So. Well, and the, the dealer there or the, the exhibitor there, he was saying, he's like, it'll keep up with just about any bike on the street. Yeah. So it, it, it does top out. And I, and I did find some hacks online where you can fix this. But the engine is rev limited at 140 miles per hour. <laughs> Just. Just 140. So you can, but I found some hacks that they were able to take it up to 165. No, I'm good. Was, I don't want to go that fast on a three wheel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. <laughs> but he was saying you can drift it. Yeah. In, yeah. In first and second gear easily. Yeah. Uh, to put it in sport mode, there's no traction control, nothing. That's, wow. So I, that's like fun mode and everything else is. Um, I don't want to get in trouble with the wife mode. Yeah. So there's Your wife that. can yell at me all day. It's that law that <laughs> costs you real I'll, money. I'll fuck you. Uh, the next bike on my list was the Confederate FA-13 combat bomber. Now, the price tag hurts. Yeah. It's, 100, it's, it's a house. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's $135,000. A nice house. Or a studio apartment in California. <laughs> that's 25 square feet. Yeah. Um, but... Just the design and just the way that that bike flows. It, it looks like a concept bike. And something that I was told is that they are going to start producing a entry-level, complete custom motorcycle that's going to be around that forty to $50,000 price range. Um, still too rich yep. for my blood. It's, <laughs> it's still expensive. <laughs> but if you start looking at like, custom custom bikes is it going to be an electric bike with 110 mile range no okay no it's not gonna be gay i mean harley i mean wait <laughs> no nope, it's there that's stuck to the tape yeah that's it um no it's it's he he couldn't show me any of the images on it but the way he explained it kind of the concepts that he was talking about and going back and looking at some of their other bikes awesome it's, it's going to be awesome and especially for 40 to fifty thousand dollars if you're buying a custom bike anyways, yeah, I mean, that's a CVO. Well, and if it's putting down, you know, like for the, the war horse, war hawk, 150, 150 horse horsepower, 160 torque. torque. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. And no matter what, that's a custom piece that you roll up to your local bar. No one's going to have that. No one. No. Not a chance. So that that's definitely going to be a panty dropper right there. Uh, and then, of course, just like uh, both of y'all, the BMW R1250 GS, uh, the base model is 18K. Just loved it. So I want one so bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I, I think we have enough areas around here we could go right oh, yes. off-road and switch between that we would have a blast. Uh, I mean, we'd have to up our medical insurance. But <laughs> wouldn't, you know, you know, having that particular model wouldn't have been so bad we went to terra lingua terra lingua oh no that would have been a breeze yeah anyways so let's talk about the size of the show um i mentioned it y'all didn't necessarily agree but it it felt a lot smaller um like there wasn't as many of the local shops there there wasn't as many manufacturers out there i mean yeah your big your big bike guys were there but I don't know. It just it did not feel like they brought everything out to the show. They, and they also didn't have the stunt show this year. Yeah. I, I'm not uh, upset about that. Uh, I mean, it's kind of cool. It, it, it draws a different crowd. Yeah. If they would have had it out, so outside last year where the guys could actually do the stunts yeah. that they wanted to do, I think it would it'd be cool. They were very limited. Yeah, those rafters and you all. You know, ceiling and all. Yeah. But... Uh, but no, it just it felt a lot smaller. We made it around there quick, and we were talking to everybody. You were talking to everybody. You you definitely talked to a lot of people about more than just you know podcast stuff. 
Oh, that's a nice wallet. Where'd you get that wallet? If anybody <laughs> wants to get me this wallet, I like this wallet. Hey, my birthday is coming up. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, so the size did feel smaller. And there are some comments on your video, Justin, yeah. that people mm-hmm. have even said that they and were I heard, there. Yeah, I heard it from multiple people while we were at the show. Yeah. And I didn't feel it while we were there. But thinking back on how large that food area was, plus how much bigger some of the manufacturer's displays were. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to agree. It, Like I said, in person, I didn't feel it, but thinking back on it. Yeah, yeah. they did have a lot larger displays yeah. that they, yeah. they put out. Now, yep. did y'all go to the Harley display? I no. Kinda, I walked by it. Yeah, I, I walked by it three times and never actually went in. Nope. No. I, I was kind of hoping, and I didn't see a live wire, so I was like, no. ah, fuck it, I don't care. If they'd had one, it'd have been roped off anyways. Yeah, yeah but still, I wanted to see it. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, they released the the specs and everything for it like now, the day after <laughs> yeah so now i'm not completely upset that i didn't see it yeah um okay yeah, it was like really the ftr was like the only i mean in our market i'm sure there was some sport bike stuff that i wouldn't know the difference i know that that um that z400 that's a fairly new model i don't know if it's pulling the same publicity as the live wire or the ftr is but the FTR was the only thing on my radar that was like super new that I wanted to check out. That was my first time seeing it in person. I'd have to say the monkey was on my list. Ah, uh, yeah. I would, I'd have to say, yeah. I hadn't seen the monkey in person yet. Yeah. Either. The monkey and the, was it the Super Cub? Super Cub. Mm-hmm. I, oh, yeah, the Super Cub. Oh, and the, yeah. well, no, I saw the CB900 at one of our local shops, but mm. yeah. Yeah, I just, I'm still, I feel too big on those bikes. Yeah. Um, I, I love the way they look. Uh, and I can appreciate what they're capable of doing. To just no. I think I am peeking out the size of person that can enjoy that bike. Well, see, I mm. think you nine months ago, yes. Yeah. You today, you fit perfectly on all the crotch rockets you threw your leg over. That's true. So I except think except for my my boy band skinny jeans, according to my comments, they said I because yeah. of my jeans I couldn't yeah swing a leg couldn't, over. Couldn't swing a leg over the, the what I, the Africa. Even though I did. Okay, the Africa, I was just feeling some stretch in the thighs on that one. That, th- that thing's got like a 62-inch CI. Like, I know I'm exaggerating, but it's huge. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is very tall. I it's mean, taller than dirt bikes. When I sat on it and compressed that spring down, I was able to flat foot it. Yeah. But barely. Yeah, it feels like a dirt bike. But, again, I, I think I would be okay getting an Africa twin just so I could uh, go and have some fun on it. But, uh, but two yeah. foot ten inches is the seat height. So thirty four inch seat height. Yeah, thirty four. No, two foot ten inches. One foot's twelve inches. You looking up the Africa? Yeah. Plus another twelve. Plus another ten. That doesn't seem right though. That's thirty four inches. That's like I said. The Grom's thirty inches. For the seat height? Yeah. Huh. Anyways, maybe this compressed. <laughs> compressed with a 300 pound person on it uh so let's let's transition a little bit into who we saw and met up with uh there at the show so in your video it kind of spoiled it but uh we did get to meet up with adam yes. and uh hang out and kind of go around a little bit with him um but that was mainly planning for the after event Correct. Um, met up with the guys from Fast Life Garage and the Fast Life Podcast. So if y'all haven't heard these guys before, uh, go out, check them out. They're on all the major streaming services, just like we are. Uh, awesome dudes. Uh, their artwork that they do Ridiculous. is insanely amazing. So uh, if you ever need custom paint work, those are the guys to go talk to. Yep. He won Best Dyna at the IMS last year. Sweet. That's how good his work is. So, <laughs> yeah. So we got to hang out with those guys. Super nice guys. Super down to earth. Um, now, Biker Living Magazine. Um, who put this one down? Is this you? Yes. Super cool people. Yep. We we me and Ken t- got to talk to them briefly at uh, Texas Hill Cycle Show last year, which by the way the date has been announced for that. Uh, I don't know what it is, but you can go look them up on Instagram. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, super down-to-earth, chill guys. And then the the guys from, or the guy. The guy, yeah. From Texas Performance. <laughs> yeah. Now, he looks like Post Malone's, like, taller, yeah. better-looking brother. <laughs> 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 it's just, I was like, I actually double-checked. I was like, wait, 
I thought Post Malone had tattoos on his face. Uh, it's so funny because like you got Jesse, who mm-hmm. is uh, Jace's brother, the little guy with all the tattoos, mm-hmm. who looked like a little Post Malone, and right. then you got the tall guy from t- <laughs> from Texas Performers, who like a large Post Malone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess Post Malone's just now the the stereotype of long haired, tattooed white guys. There you go. Yeah, neither of them had face tattoos though. So, no. <laughs> which Post Malone thing. has a lot of now. Yeah. But uh, so just hung out with him, kind of walked around the show a little bit and just awesome people. Yep. And so from there, I took you guys down or we went to Twisted Root Burger Company oh, so good. Uh, in Deep Ellum. Yes. Uh, ate, hung out, and then we realized we had like three and a half hours to kill <laughs> uh, before yeah. the meet and greet that took place at Stroker's. So I took you guys down uh, Johnny Roebuck memory lane. <laughs> And Rags showed, to riches. Rags we to ain't riches. done. I <laughs> <laughs> so can't rap, rap about being broke no more. <laughs> no, no, I'm not broke. But it it kind of puts things in perspective, though, when you see where you came from. You know, when we went through Sanderson, kind of seeing where you, you came from and then where you're at today. And, All six blocks of it. Yeah. You sneeze and you you, you <laughs> miss it. But uh, it is it is kind of nice to bell reminisce a little bit. Yep. Uh, and kill a shitload of time. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, we actually ended up getting there like five minutes late. Yeah. Tra- so, traffic. We went to the traffic. <laughs> yeah, I love Dallas traffic. Um, so, yeah, we went to Rick Fairless's Strokers of Dallas. Uh, that for was the uh, after party. That was an experience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, it was smaller than you had hyped it up to be. Well, well, there in, was at least in my head. You did you see how big the side of the building went? Yeah. I've yeah. heard it's more of a daytime place. Yeah. And at nighttime, it turns into kind of like a, a quaint little quiet biker bar. But in, during the daytime, it's it's popping. So yeah. that right. was something I was not informed to. Ah, okay then. So I think it's kind of like um, Shade Tree Saloon where they have the GOC event. Mm-hmm. It's more of a daytime location. So also thinking about it too, Cowboys were in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Uh, so a lot of people were probably at home or at a party or something watching that but there's still over 100 people there easily um hanging out and a lot uh, of good looking bikes too oh yes yeah and i I wish the shop would have been open so we could go in and see a lot of rick fairless's customs he did supposed to be but i was i'm not gonna bring that up (laughs) (laughs) but you did talk about over promised under delivered i did look through the window and though it was dark, it looked very interesting. Yeah. It, I saw like five or six of his bikes at the show. So Yeah, he did have a lot there um, that keep or support your local chump. That's his thing. Mm. Um, so a lot of his shop has a lot of those T-shirts and swag items. Gotcha. Um, but Strokers is cool. You do run into a lot of one percenter and one percenter support clubs there. Uh, so... They're pretty tame. They keep it light there. They don't really cause any issues. But it, if you don't want to be around those types of bikers, don't go. Don't go there. Um, True. But if you just want to have a good time and don't really care who's there, then go hang out and uh, visit Strokers of Dallas. Uh, from there, we went and kind of crashed the Fast Life Garage guys' uh, anniversary after party. party. Yeah. At yeah. the uh, Anvil Pub. That was a good time. Man. So if you're if you've ever been to Sixth Street in Austin, it's a very similar atmosphere within Deep Ellum in Dallas. Yeah. But better. But better because imagine Sixth Street but with the street not closed down. <laughs> so you have not only drunk people walking around, you have drunk people walking into traffic. So yes. Well they also a, had more non alcoholic stuff there. That's true. They had Different, a bunch of like the dessert they shops. Had the, the donut and the shop shops, and then like yeah. a, a unicorn dessert shop. Yeah. And ice cream parlor. Ice cream parlors. So coffee shops. Coffee shops, yeah. Yeah. With your juice. I never got my juice, but there the was way. a lot of um it wasn't hand pressed. Uh. <laughs> there was a lot of like good restaurants down there too. Yeah. Like, you got Twisted Root and then that place that we parked in front of looked really good too. Yeah, that Mexican restaurant. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that place is pricey. Oh I, it looked like well, it. It's deep <laughs> so yeah. So, but yeah, so that, that was kind of it. We ended up hanging out there till about what, just over, I don't remember, midnight ish <laughs> or 1130 ish or something I, like that. I, I do not Got to talk with Moose from uh, Mission Motorcycle. Man, yeah. talk about <laughs> just the, you know, I don't look up to people a lot. Like 
I don't, I don't really, look up to people a lot. Yeah, I don't really put people on pedestals, but that guy is, that's who I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> like, he literally does everything that I want to do. I mean, that was a figurative and literal expression for me. Oh, that too, yes. I he's, mean, he's tall as shit. Tall, <laughs> I've seen his bikes everywhere. everywhere. Yep. And I had no idea what he looked like, and he's just like, yeah, you know, I am uh, i don't need to. Yeah. I was like, how do I not know you? And he's like, well, you know, I just kind of, you know, it's just. You he know, said, I don't need to be that guy. I don't need to be that yeah. guy. He, he's the behind the scenes yeah. type of guy. That but, bike but that he, he was showing us. But he wasn't I, behind the scenes, though. That's the thing. Like, I drooled over everywhere. that bike last year. That was the one I drooled over at during the show. Yeah. And here he is just talking about what he did to build it and how he hid the stuff. I was like, oh, my God. Just the most humble, yeah. knowledgeable guy ever. And just yeah, I was I was totally fanboying yep. when I met him. Like I just couldn't believe it. <laughs> and then his girlfriend is the one who actually runs motorcycle missions and kind of him going into a little bit of the story behind yes. that is super awesome. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have him on for a podcast in oh, yeah. a future episode for sure. Yeah, he already said he would do it. Yeah. So Yo, that's you gotta get him and his chick on here. That'd be awesome. And and then he started, you know, someone asked him, I think it was uh Miss Bird, well can you talk? And he's like, well, give me, oh, a, give me a topic. Just, just pick a topic, any and topic. And she chose Panini Press. And yeah, Panini, Panini, about Panini Press. Wow. He went off on like a three-minute rant, and it sounded like he knew everything there was to know about Panini Press. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so it's pretty cool. Great. It was yeah. so great. Yeah, that was awesome. All right. So we're actually going to cut this episode a little bit short. Um, Wait, we're short? Yeah. I feel like I've been talking for nine hours. Yeah, 46 minutes. You don't ever tell me I'm short. But I didn't tell you. Uh, you sure. Only short on one end. <laughs> <laughs> so the more you know. Yeah. So <laughs> hold on, you didn't write down your outro. What are you gonna do? Oh shit! You're gonna free ball it? Yeah. Uh oh. This yeah. should be good. All right, guys, listen <laughs> up. So thank you for tuning in to the Between Two Wheels podcast. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and podcast episode. You guys are a bunch of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, suck. Come on, you got this. Wah, I got faith in you. Right. No, you got a little bit of you and faith. Hey, yo. Ooh. <laughs> okay, get get out of your system, guys. Come on. <laughs> All, right. All, right. All right. Thank you for tuning in to the Between Two Wheels podcast. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed making it. Uh, be sure to head over to our website, www.betweentwowheels.com. The two are spelled out T-W-O. Uh, to check out the show notes for this episode, links to any of the things that we discussed, and hit up our Patreon link there and become a patron of the show to help us out with Operation Clean Slate. On behalf of the Between Two Wheels crew, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you suck what? and be someone better. Peace. <laughs> I thought you were about to get real dad on us for uh, a second. Oh, shit. All right, Mr. <laughs>